Welcome back to Mulberry Ranch Farm. Today, we take a road trip, 30 minutes down the road. Let's see where we go. So we're going to get something for the goats today. It's something for the goat pen. Everything is always for the goats on our farm, it feels like. But you guys are gonna have to wait to see when we get home and start to unload it to see what we got for them. But I think they're gonna enjoy it. Are you guys ready to see? Drum roll, please. Insert drum roll here. Spools! <laughs> we got spools! Mark, are you ready to roll? He's ready? To... Oh, they're for you, right? Yeah, yeah. Mark, he's gonna play on it, not the goats. The middle yeah. <laughs> the goats are coming, but like, guys, we'll have to probably redo these holes, like, in the middle, because their foot will go in there. But that's just, like, cutting a piece and putting it on yeah, top of there. Enough, yeah. yeah, they're big enough. They'll be okay. But let's get these things rolling. Shut up! And now they're like, what is this? Witchcraft. Guys, no. Get back. Let's take it, Carrie. Get down. Get down. Oh, no! Oh, no! They're in. Watch out, Dilly! Watch out. Ugh. What do you think? What do you think? <laughs> Are you gonna show them how it's done? Oh. Oh. That, like a ninja. <laughs> Come on. Oh, they went up there too, babe. Jump off like a ninja. Oh. We're old. We're too old to jump like ninjas. Hi. She always wants to give me a massage. Those two will not. Will not. Look at them looking. I'll be careful. Here we go. Oh, be careful with your okay. foot. Do you like it? She's like, uh, I don't know. <laughs> I don't know about this. Now she realizes. Yeah. Because I am now the queen. <laughs> what? You like it, Will? You like it, Willow? These guys are like, oh, this is nice. So we could probably, yeah, we'll probably move things from like over here all the way over here. Oh, she wants to. Hey, girls. Oh. <laughs> hey, did you guys make her? I missed that moment. <laughs> oh, she looked at it and she loved it. You don't even like the camera. Quick. Naughty goats. Hey, they're naughty. Get out of the camera! Oh, guys. Jump up on there. It is so cold out here. They know that the show, oh, you guys got a little something on you there. They know that they are the centers of the show. So, we are always on the lookout for these spools and every time I see them, the truck's either broken or they're too far away or they're too much because, so while we love these for our goats, a lot of people like these for crafts. And it's kind of the end thing now since everybody's like in shutdown and bored, I guess. So yeah, I found them pretty close in our truck while had its hiccups on the way there, we got it done. So yeah, I'm really glad to get these though because they, they like it and my plan is to get some cinder blocks too around it to get them to jump up on the cinder blocks and help grind away their hooves. I kind of want to do this around my water too because my sister-in-law does it and then she doesn't have to hardly ever trim hooves and if I don't have to trim hooves that's a good thing right? Yeah, it's a good thing. Bell agrees. And of course we've got enough things going on around the farm. Gosh the dogs are on today. Hey, hey, guys. But Mark has uh, been working on a couple of different projects downstairs in his gunsmithing bench. So he's got a lot of extra parts and had the drill out and as you can see like some perfect, perfect lumber just for this. So went and grabbed the drill, pieces of wood, and we're going to go and sure this up. And while some people may say, well, they're sure-footed, they'll be fine. 
yeah, you say that till you get a, a goat with a broken leg and then wish you would have just done what you're supposed to do. So I'm just gonna do what I'm supposed to do. I'm gonna take a whole lot, just enough to keep it in place. Don't want any broken legs, because with my luck, it'll always be my favorite goat that gets hurt. Not that they, I don't love them all, but everybody has favorites. Here we go. Now on to you guys. And leave it to your goat to kind of proof things for you and see if there's anything that they can eat or chew on that they shouldn't. But lo and behold, Pearl is already over here trying to chew on this. So just take that out because I don't need any digestive issues with an animal whose digestive system is already pretty finicky. What do you guys think? What do you think? I think I need to make it toward the, um, I've got a slide over here. Yeah, right over, over there. Now go get the slide and put it over here. The kids love to play on it. So, yeah. Now maybe we'll get that board to go kind of like across here. We'll see. We'll see what we can do for it. So here they are trying to, see, look, look at her. She's trying to chew on it all. What are you chewing on? Hey, what are you chewing? There's literally nothing that she can get a hold of. She's just, stop. Stop being a weirdo. Willow, don't be weird. She knows she's being weird. She wants to hide her face. You know, just being a yucky little culprit. Then I'm also going to just try to check like up underneath for any screws or sharp points and on the bottom. So really before you put these spools in with your goats, you kind of leave them to their own devices. It's probably a really good practice to go ahead and just look over them, make sure there's no sharp points, nothing they can hurt themselves on. We covered the holes because we don't want to possibly have broken legs. I will make sure to put down any um, pointy surfaces because I don't want tetanus and I don't want anything like that. Um, even though I do do a CD&T booster every year for my goats, I still don't want to leave anything in their pen that's going to be harmful for them and an extra medical bill for me. So, yeah, and you guys can tell they're they're curious. They're curious. Are you curious? Is it a good head scratcher? Willow kind of rubbing on here like that gave me an idea. So maybe I'll get some of those long push broom um, broom heads, and I'll just screw them on the sides, and they can rub against them and scratch as they want. Maybe I'll put it up against the <laughs> the top for Big Old Dilly, so she kind of get a little bit of a back scratch in. But yeah, I think that's gonna do it here. Let's see if we can get this other stuff over here and make them a nice little playset. I'm sure they will appreciate it. Goats always do. But look! Da -da -da -da. So this is kind of new for us to do, but the more that I've had my goats and the more times I put things out here, like our tractor, they love to jump on it and they love to play. So I figure why not give them a dedicated space? And what I would really like to do, like really, really would like to do is to lay down some, um, landscape cloth under here and put sand and gravel like just this spot so like when they do play on it whether they're cinder blocks or anything over here or I'm hoping to get maybe some used concrete slabs at some point that that will help wear their hooves off and kind of just be a nice place to like go around because this will be a headache when we bush hog our field and also with the future plans for rotational grazing that are in the works I don't know how cohesive this is going to be. But yeah, I think that's gonna do it for this. Let's see what else we can get into today, if anything at all. Hello, Goose. How are you doing today? You feeling better? Yeah. We're still searching for ducks and geese. I think I may have found some nearby. They're actually called East Indies. They're a beautiful blackbird. Smaller duck size because this is a smaller goose. So I don't really want a big standard size duck. I'm afraid they'll come and dominate him. And I just wanted to give you guys an update. So he goes outside. I let him in and out every day. I try not to let him outside because he gets really nervous with the added light from the house. I've noticed like if I move around at dark and I'm feeding, it wigs him out. He's a lot calmer in here at night if it's just consistent. So 
And his feather's are already growing too, so I don't think he'll be here for very long at all, or she, keep assuming. He's got a very ganderish way about him, so. So I just kind of wanted to give a little recap on our goose. For those of you that are new, we found this Ross's goose injured at my mother-in-law's house. Um, we looked around, there were no other birds around, but it was near a feed mill, which is not uncommon for lots of birds to be around there this time of year with a shortage of food, not to mention he's a migratory bird. So he was probably on his way through, or her way, on its way through. And here's the video linked up top that kind of goes over that story, but a quick recap. Um, he was injured, it was injured, so we decided to take it to our farm to let it rest and recuperate. And I had called um, our local DNR to figure out if it was okay to hold on to this because there were really no um, waterfowl rehabilitators in our area. So I was going to have to drive a few hours just to take him somewhere where someone could rehabilitate him. So the DNR officer said, go ahead and clip its wing, one wing to keep it grounded because our fear was with the leg or the hip injury that it seemed like he had, that if he kept trying to take off, he'd get airborne and fall and hurt himself worse. So at least with one clipped wing, it keeps him grounded so that he can heal. Now his leg does seem a little bit better, but I can tell every now and then he has his days where he's got a hitch in the giddy up. So we have no intention of keeping this goose forever. Once his um, flight feathers grow back in, he is allowed to go on his merry way. And I'm trying to find ducks or smaller breed geese right now for him to have friends because I know he does not like being by himself. But for some reason, ducks are really hard to find in my area, but we, we found a pair of East Indies, but they're, they're kind of expensive. And we also waited about three days before we clipped wings because we wanted to see um, if any more of these geese popped up in the area, even though I doubt that he would have been able to fly away with them. Just the way that he was acting, even like when he was trying to fly here before we clipped feathers, he would get a little bit high and then, and then go right back down. So I don't know what's going on. And once his flight feathers do come in, if he still can't fly, then I will make the trek to take him to um, a wildlife rehabilitator where Hopefully they have other waterfowl, or if I'm more inclined in that in that point in time to be ready for ducks and geese, then they might just stay. But I don't have any intention to keep this goose forever. It's a wild animal. It deserves to be wild. We're just kind of giving it a, a, a moment to take a breather and recoup before it goes on its merry way. So I think we're getting ready to wrap it up on this one. I'm glad you guys could come along with me, but I did want to give you a quick update to show you just how effective my chickens and turkeys are being when it comes to permaculture. So I've only got feed on the bigger piles, but you can tell the piles they've been working on. This was a big pile, and you guys can see it's basically flat. They're doing a great job. This one was really tall too. It's basically flat, basically flat. So they're doing a fantastic job. And I can see again why Justin Rhodes gets like so awesomely giddy about permaculture with his animals because these guys are saving me a lot of time in the spring. I'm glad I got ahead of the game and moved the manure earlier this week. If you guys didn't get to see that video, it's gonna be linked up top, but they're helping me out even more. And who can say no to a helping hand? They already give me eggs, so they'll be getting their feed to give me eggs, but they're also spreading this manure around in my garden to help feed me further. So I don't know how you couldn't. Like, and my dog's trying to eat the, the chicken feed. Dude, get out of there, get out of there. She gets fed every day, a lot. <laughs> so I think that's what I'm gonna leave you guys with is just that update of what's going on with our goat's new playground, the goose, the chickens, and hopefully I'm in contact with that seller with the East Indies. So hopefully I'll have East Indies ducks by the next time we see each other. But if not, I'm still looking for some ducks. So until next time, guys, thanks so much for being here. Leave in the comments what you thought about today's episode. What are some interesting toys that you think I could add to my goat pen? And what do you think about these chickens and turkeys doing an awesome job helping me out? So drop me a like, leave me a comment, guys. And if you're new to the channel, welcome. I hope you enjoyed it. Think about subscribing. That way you guys can see what's going on here at Mulberry Branch Farm. But until next time, guys, remember to be kind to one another's out there and stay safe. We'll see you in the next one. Bye, y'all.